Great, thank you, Yanisa, and uh, welcome everyone, and thank you so much for taking the time to attend today's webinar on unmanned aerial systems. We'll be talking about supplier segmentation, what we call a market map, which I will show you visually, and we'll do a GovShop demo to see how you can rapidly identify suppliers within unmanned aerial systems. I think I'm just going to call that UAS for, uh, for today's webinar to keep things simple. So let me tee up today's agenda that we're going to be going through. Here we go. So we'll begin with um, examples of um, unmanned aerial systems. This is very likely intuitive for everyone that's attending, but I'll just throw up some examples as to how they're used, uh, specifically within the government context, of course. We'll then talk a little bit about supplier segmentation and the market map. And then we will dive into a demo of GovShop. And uh, as promised, I'll show you how to identify suppliers within unmanned aerial systems and all the different sub-segments within that market, which we're about to talk about. Uh, today's attendance is actually uh, excellent. We have government folks, both procurement and program professionals from across federal, state, county, and local government. So great attendance today. And once again, thank you all for attending. Before I dive into today's agenda, there's just a couple of things I wanna mention in advance. First, I'd like to thank our sponsor, iValua. iValua is a complete unified source-to-pay suite, software and solutions and services. Uh, you can visit iValua at iValua.com. For those of you that may not be familiar with GovShop, uh, GovShop is a single place to search, find, and connect with suppliers. We have about 1.6 million plus suppliers on GovShop. Uh, most recent count, we continue to add more and more suppliers on GovShop. Uh, these suppliers are organized by pretty much practically all product, services, commodity areas that are bought by government. Uh, these suppliers are organized exactly by that, by the product service commodity area. You can also search for suppliers by keyword, uh, by contract, in addition to <clears throat> the product, service, or commodity area. GovShop is uh, very easy to use and free for government professionals. Uh, suppliers actually, companies come to GovShop, they can claim their profile and enhance their profile. We built GovShop specifically for government users in mind to help uh, government professionals um, identify the suppliers for whatever product, service, or commodity area that you're most immediately uh, looking for. Uh, on GovShop, uh, above and beyond the organization of GovShop, which I just highlighted, we have a comprehensive set of supplier base uh, suppliers and profiles of those suppliers. And so these suppliers, uh, these supplier profiles cover all kinds of information about these companies. Uh, basic information, a description of what they do, what their major product and service areas are, uh, whether or not they're, they've hi they're highlighting past experience. Uh, suppliers and com the companies are actually in process of, um, on a continual basis of claiming their profiles and making those, those enhancements. And I do want to highlight that, um, you know, these 1.6 million plus suppliers that we have and counting, uh, they <clears throat> cover the full spectrum of uh, current suppliers that, that many government agencies might already be familiar with, but um, equally important, perhaps even more importantly, we have tons of emerging suppliers and uh, lots of minority suppliers as well on GovShop. So that's a little bit about GovShop. You will see GovShop in action uh, toward the end of the webinar when I do a demo. Of course, GovShop is built by Public Spend Forum. That's the name of our company. Public Spend Forum is a market intelligence platform for public sector buyers and suppliers. Uh, when you visit Public Spend Forum, you'll find uh, lots of information on suppliers and market and markets uh, cutting across uh, the full spectrum of, of industries and markets that, uh, that you may be uh, familiar with. You'll find best practice frameworks that, uh, that help you buy better and improve your procurement procedures. And also on Public Spend Forum, you'll find a global community and network of peers and experts. So um, absolutely, uh, please do visit publicspendforum.net. And by the way, on the Public Spend Forum main page, if you can see my cursor in the upper right-hand corner, uh, you'll see a link to GovShop. So that's another way to get to govshop.com. So GovShop, you can find on govshop.com. And of course, you can also access it via publicspendforum.net, our company main page. Okay, let's dive in. 
So I'd like to begin by just confirming our intuition. What are we talking about when we say unmanned aerial systems and what are all the different types of applications? So here, um, very quickly, these are, the, these are just some basic applications, um, some of which you might be more familiar with. The most obvious ones are upper left and upper right, where we're depicting military and homeland security related applications of using unmanned aerial systems. In the lower left, it's more of a civil and commercial example. That's more of an agricultural context. There's a drone flying above a field. And as you can see, the drone is sp spraying. In the uh, lower right, that's more of a public safety type of uh, application of drones. And in this case, it's a firefighting context. So unmanned aerial systems, um, I'm sure it's intuitively obvious to everyone attending today. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to um, navigating the market to actually buy unmanned aerial systems, different government agencies are typically at very different stages of their journey. Uh, some of you may be very far along in, in that you have a UAS system already deployed and you're looking for additional drones or accessories or maintenance and repair support, things like that. Others of you may be just starting your journey. And so it really helps to understand within this UAS industry, how are suppliers organized? What are their offerings? If you're far enough, if you're far enough along in your journey, you want to really cut, you, you want to identify those suppliers that can meet your your ancillary needs or your maintenance requirements. And you want, you want to be able to identify them quickly. If you're early stage within your journey, you're probably going to be looking for a full solution provider to help you get up and running on uh, using and deploying drones for your mission applications and mission objectives. And so for that reason, we've actually delineated this industry, the UAS industry. There's about nine major segments. Um, there's no one right way to delineate the industry. We came at this from the perspective of looking at it from your needs as the buyers, as well as the supply market. What does that look like? What are the natural grouping of suppliers as it pertains to their offerings? So you'll see here the nine major segments. On the far left, we have the UAS full solution providers. That basically means those suppliers uh, cover a full spectrum. They provide the drones as well as the communications equipment, in most cases, ground control equipment, uh, very likely provide maintenance and repair in most cases. So you get the idea. The full solution providers uh, cover the entire spectrum of needs uh, that a buyer would have in buying, deploying, and, and utilizing unmanned aerial systems. And then of course, we have the individual segments to the right of that such as UAS software, UAS payloads, UAS accessories. I skipped over UAV, the vehicle part, that's the drone part. Uh, and then all the way to the far right, we see training services and maintenance and repair. And so this is how the market is organized and this is how we understand buyers approach the market. And it varies, like I said, depending upon your stage and your journey in deploying up unmanned aerial systems. And so this is just a basic segmentation. By the way, within UAV, we have a sub-segment there. You'll see it's kind of faded out. It says SUAV, Small Unmanned Aerial Vehicles. There's lots of suppliers that do the UAVs, but a smaller subset that focus on these small form factor UAVs. Uh, by the way, SUAV, there is a definition for that. It does vary depending upon what country you're in, and it may vary even within the United States, but generally speaking, I think the FAA um, defines that as 55 kilograms or less in, in the US at least. But, um, but I think the important point though is that a smaller subset of suppliers actually focus on building the small UAVs. Uh, you'll have many more suppliers that build you know, the larger UAVs. What I'd like to do next is <clears throat> I wanna show you what we call a market map. And it's really meant to be a depiction of what is in GovShop. So if I take the same nine segments and I display them this way, so the nine segments are the blue boxes, the same nine that we saw on the previous page. And that yellow, the yellow box in the upper left, that's just a small UAV box. So in GovShop, we have a total of over 2,400 suppliers within the UAS market, broadly speaking. And um, those 2,400 suppliers provide coverage of uh, these nine segments to varying degrees. 
And so um, what we're depicting here is just the first few, first handful of suppliers in each box. Each one of these boxes has potentially hundreds of suppliers in it. Uh, as I mentioned on the previous slide, some suppliers cut across multiple segments within the UAS market, and some are highly specialized. And you'll find that distinction when you dig into GovShop and you start performing searches, you'll be able to clearly see what, what suppliers do what. I realize this slide here is a bit of an eye chart. So I'm gonna just take a closer look at the UAV segment within this market. I'll do that on the next slide. So here's just a bit of a blow up of the UAV segment. <clears throat> now, out of those 2,400 suppliers in the, in the UAS market that I highlighted on the previous slide, about 1,000 or so, it's, about, it's actually about 1,100, and we'll see the exact number in just a moment, are actually uh, providers of the UAVs themselves. And out of the 1,100 or so, it says 1,000 plus here, only about 70 or so uh, focus on the small form form vector UAVs. And you can, uh, you can dig into all of these, who are the suppliers, what are the numbers, and a whole bunch of other rich filters against these suppliers. You can do all of that in GovShop, which is what I'd like to demonstrate uh, next. So let me just do a time check. Okay, we're doing good on time. Um, I wanna keep this demo very simple and uh, I want to impart just in very basic, in a few basic screens, what you can do in GovShop. Uh, this isn't intended to be training, though if you'd like to have training, we're happy to do so as a follow-up. This is more, what can you do in GovShop? How can you quickly identify these suppliers? And um, what are the basics of navigating GovShop really is what I'm going to demonstrate. So these are the four things I, I want to do as I switch over to the live GovShop website. Um, hopefully I'll remember all four of these things as we go through the demo. So I'm now going to switch over. I'm gonna come out of the presentation view, switch over to my browser, and I'm going to go into GovShop. Okay, I'm on the main GovShop uh, page right here. <clears throat> if you go to govshop.com, this is exactly what you would see. In the center, you see that very large, well, horizontally oriented um, search box. So that's the main search box. And I'm gonna begin there. In the PowerPoint, I already covered that you can search by commodity code, you can search by contract vehicle. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go in the main search box and I'm going to type in UAS. I'm not gonna hit return, I'm just gonna type in UAS. Um, you'll see some results that come up without hitting return. You'll see uh, three groups of search results that come up. There's a supplier grouping, uh, a few of the suppliers are listed that match that term UAS. You can click here to see all the suppliers that came up against the search term UAS. Next, you'll see a whole bunch of commodity codes that come up. Um, a few of them are displayed and then you can click here where my cursor is to see all of the commodity codes that matched UAS. And then of course you've got the contract vehicles here. But UAS, typing in UAS is such a strange thing to do. So let me just backspace a couple of characters. I'm just going to type out unmanned aerial systems. Okay, you're probably going to get better, more precise search results when you type it out completely. So now you see a few of the suppliers being displayed and you can see all the suppliers here. That seems like a very large number. That's probably because uh, out of these three words, unmanned aerial systems, any one of these words is being used to match uh, for a supplier search result. Uh, same thing goes for the commodity code results here. Same thing again for the contract vehicle results. So that's probably not gonna give you the best results. Let me just put that those same words, unmanned aerial systems, I'll just put them in quotes. By the way, in the future, you won't have to worry about quotes or no quotes or any of that. That's a bit uh, cumbersome to remember. Uh, we're going to have a feature in GovShop that when you type in whatever words you type in, that main search box, it'll ask you if you want to match all of the words or any one of the words. And so you don't have to worry about this quotation stuff. But just to walk through this, I'm just going to do it that way. Okay, now we see that we have a more uh, precise set of search results that came up. Um, again, 
the suppliers that matched. Here's the full set of suppliers, the commodity codes that matched. You can go to the full listing of commodity codes here and the contract vehicles that matched. Now, what I'd like to do is uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and click on show all commodity codes here toward the center of the screen. And the reason I'm going to do that is we've built out a main page for unmanned aerial systems that I'd like you to be aware of. And I'm going to go ahead and access that main page right here. By the way, I have not clicked on it yet. I'm just hovering above it. And you'll notice it's, it's telling me there's 2,401 suppliers, the same number that we saw that I, that I mentioned in the PowerPoint. Now I'm gonna click on unmanned aerial systems here so I can go to the main page. Okay, this is the main page that we built for unmanned aerial systems. That's the top level. So that's before you get down to the segments. So just a couple things I'd like to show you here on the main page. Uh, first, we just have a brief description of this industry up on top, right below the words in blue, unmanned aerial systems. Um, here toward the middle of the page, as I scroll down, we have some, um, some insight articles that talk about unmanned aerial systems. We have one here on the top government contractors. We have one here on how to use drones in the public sector and so on. If I scroll down a little bit, we're actually building out this section here where it says opportunities, services, market research library. But I'm going to, for today's purposes, just show you that if you continue to scroll down, you'll see a full listing of those 2,401 suppliers beginning with, there's a combination of suppliers here. Some are the ones that you already know about, right? The big, big defense contractors, the big OEMs, if you will, um, like Raytheon, BAE Systems, Northrop Grumman. You're also going to see emerging players that you may be less familiar with, such as Krauss Aerospace, for example, and others as you continue to scroll down the page. Now, I doubt many of you are gonna come to GovShop to find out that BAE Systems sells drones. You already know that. You don't need GovShop for that. But out of these 200, excuse me, out of these 2,401 suppliers that are currently identified here in GovShop as UAS suppliers, the vast majority of them are emerging companies. There's only a few, um, less than a dozen major OEMs and uh, defense primes that, that you folks in federal government may be familiar with, a dozen or so but you get the idea. So there's a ton of smaller, more specialized and emerging players that you're gonna find in GovShop. And I wanted to just make that point right now. Um, in the PowerPoint, I showed you there were nine major segments within unmanned aerial systems. Notice here, going back toward the top of this, of this main page, we have included commodity codes and an arrow pointing down, which you can expand on. What comes up then is a listing of those exact nine segments that I highlighted in the PowerPoint. And then of course, UAV has another uh, expansion button here for the small UAV uh, suppliers. Without clicking on any one of these, notice that as I hover up and down each of these nine segments, I get a little indicator of how many suppliers are in each segment. So for example, where I am right now, UAS software, I see there's 441 suppliers in that segment. If I scroll down to UAS accessories, I see there's 140. You can see that I'm expanding the screen. Hopefully that's not too jittery when I do that in the display on your end, but you get the idea. What I'd like to do is um, I wanna click on one of these segments. I'm gonna to go to the UAV segment. Uh, by the way, just hovering above UAV segment, notice it says, I believe that number is 1,129 suppliers. I'd indicated over 1,000 in the PowerPoint. I'm gonna click on UAV. That's gonna take me to a lower level page for the UAV segment. If you lose track of where you are, notice that we have this little tracker, this path tracker up on top. You can see that you are currently inside the unmanned aerial systems uh, categorization within PSF markets. Okay, so we're, we're within UAV, and it's the same basic layout. <clears throat> the page has the exact same uh, layout as we saw in the higher level UAS page, except here we're focused on entirely the suppliers that provide the UAVs, the vehicles, 
aka the drones. If I scroll down, I now see only those suppliers, the 1,129 out of the 2,401, that supply just the vehicles themselves, the unmanned aerial vehicles. And I see the listing of, uh, of suppliers. Uh, again, a mix of the bigger suppliers and the small emerging, and in many cases, more specialized suppliers. And as you scroll down, you can see, I mean, if there's gonna be a thousand plus, um, seems like a, an unusually large number to work with effectively. We'll come back to that in just one second. Uh, before I address that point and I show you how to filter, I'd like to show you what one of these supplier profiles looks like. Let's go to Kraus Aerospace. By the way, this company has claimed their profile, which as I mentioned, suppliers can do for free so they can take control of the information within their profile and update it, enhance it, make sure that you're able to see the latest and greatest uh, about their company. So I'm clicking on the Kraus Aerospace Suppliers Profile. Uh, by now, you should see the Kraus Aerospace Supplier Profile page come up. Up on top, there's a brief description about the company. Um, there is a, it says read more here. I'm going to click on that because I believe Kraus Aerospace has gone in and they've, they've added quite a bit of information, it looks like. Uh, good for them. Um, the more the better. And of course, if you don't want it all expanded out, you could just click on read less like I just did a moment ago. Coming down the supplier profile page, you'll see some basic information about the company, uh, annual revenue, the DUNS number, the cage code, and a few other parameters about the company. Next section down, you'll see a listing of their specialties and expertise. It says read more, so I, I'm pretty sure Cross Aerospace has added some, yeah, they have added some, some information here. Some of this they've added, some of, some of this information, uh, the GovShop team has added in. But the important point to note here is that when Kraus Aerospace, when they claim their profile, they can go in, review, and make whatever edits they want to make. Okay, let me go ahead and collapse that a little bit so it doesn't take up as much space. I'm going to click on Read Less. If I continue to come down to the next section, Contact Info, you'll see some basic contact information here for Kraus Aerospace, including uh, individual names. In this case, uh, Stefan Kraus is listed here. And you've got some address information and phone numbers and email address. Let's, um, let's scroll down. The next section is size and minority status. Of particular interest here, I think, is the ownership, and even more so, the far right, government set-aside programs. These are official government certification. These are awarded by either the Small Business Administration or Veterans Affairs, in the case of, for example, SDVOSB, which stands for Service Disabled, veteran-owned small business. Um, it appears that Krauss Aerospace is a woman-owned small business as certified by the SBA, Small Business Administration. Uh, if I scroll down, I can see some product and service information that Krauss Aerospace has likely highlighted, as well as some past experience. Looks like it's both have been, uh, both past experiences that are shown here have been with the United States Navy. If they had existing contracts, they would list them here. Um, and, they, and if you scroll down a bit more, you'll see some downloadable content. So this is the type of information you can expect to find in the majority of supplier profiles. So we are continually updating the supplier profiles ourselves. Suppliers, more importantly, are claiming their profiles and enhancing this information for, for you guys, the government buyers. Um, we have a couple of suppliers on today's webinar too, by the way. Uh, but the suppliers, the companies are enhancing their profiles for the benefit of government buyers so that you can see the latest and greatest information, um, especially things like government set-aside program, product services, past experience, and contracts. Past experience and contracts are two of the most uh, areas of information that government buyers have told us they're most keen on. And so we continue to build out these sections um, as well. So that's, uh, that's a quick overview of what you can expect to find in the supplier profile. I'm going to go back to that list of the UAV suppliers that we were on a few moments ago. That was a list of over a thousand UAV suppliers. If you can see my cursor, I'm in the upper left-hand part of the page. It says back to list. So I'm gonna click on that. Within a few seconds, you should see that we are back to that listing 
uh, on the UAV page, which is a segment within UAS Unmanned Aerial Systems. What I'd like to do is, there's over a thousand suppliers here. You have to have some way of filtering these suppliers. So I'm going to come over here to the top of the supplier listing and toward the right hand side of the top of the supplier listing, you'll see this button which I hover on, hover above and off of, and it changes, um, it, it highlights blue when I hover on top of it. It says browse and filter suppliers. So that's your opportunity to click on it. And the same listing of a thousand plus suppliers comes up. That's the exact same listing of suppliers, Raytheon on top, followed by Krauss Aerospace and, 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 and Emerging and uh, woman owned small business. Um, and so what you can do now is that is a large number of suppliers to work from. I wouldn't expect anyone to be able you know, to download a list of a thousand suppliers and go through them manually. And so for that reason, we've enabled a few filters. Uh, most notably, what I'm going to focus on for today's remaining few minutes that we have is we have a government set-aside filter. You saw the government set-aside designation within the supplier profile. All the supplier profiles will have that. They'll tell you whether or not a supplier uh, has any one of these official government set-aside certifications. But rather than having to go through each supplier one, -on -one by one, why don't we do this? We already know Krauss Aerospace is a woman-owned small business. Well, I'm curious as to how many total women-owned small businesses are in this listing of over 1,000 suppliers. So I'm going to click on women-owned small business, and let's see what the total is. Okay, 15. So 15 out of the 1,001 suppliers have this official uh, government set-aside certification. I'm going to unclick it and then click on SDB, Small Disadvantaged Business, to see how many suppliers have that official certification. Okay, well, there's three of them. I'm going to unclick it and just do one more. SVVOSB, once again, that's Service Disabled Veteran Owned Small Business. Let's click on that. Okay, 10 suppliers have that certification. Some of these may have multiple certifications, but I'm seeing uh, quite a few different suppliers come up for these different uh, filters that I've been selecting. So now you have a demonstration of how you can go from a large number of suppliers um, and begin to utilize some of the filter functions here. I just worked with a government set-aside program filter because um, a lot of government buyers are very keenly interested in understanding how many suppliers with any given market have those certifications. And by the way, buyers have told us, government buyers have told us that before they put out a solicitation or even an RFI and they want to uh, set it up for SDB companies or women-owned small business companies. Before they do that, before they make that decision, it's helpful if they know how many they're dealing with. And so when you come to GovShop, not only can you begin with a listing of companies that are in the relevant industry, in this case, unmanned aerial vehicles within the unmanned aerial systems broader industry, but then you can, you can then filter specifically within this industry to see what the counts are and get an idea of uh, what direction you want to go and whether or not you want to have a solicitation uh, be a formal set-aside program or not. So these, I, I believe these are the things I wanted to cover, which I had laid out in the PowerPoint. Let me go back to the PowerPoint very quickly, make sure that I'm covering the things that we wanted to cover. Let me switch the view here so you can see uh, the view that I intended you to see. There we go. Okay, very good. Yeah, I think I've covered all of these four points. Again, this was not meant to be a training session. If you'd like to have training sessions, absolutely, please follow up with us. We would be, help, we'd be happy to help you and your team uh, go through a training session that we set up for you. I'd like to conclude this webinar by once again thanking you for all for your time. Please do visit the GovShop UAS page, um, just like I did as a starting point for the demo, or I guess after I began the keyword search, we came here to the UAS page. And in the meantime, um, if you wanna poke around and learn more about how to use GovShop, we do have tutorials on the GovShop main page as well. In fact, let me go back to it one more time. I'm gonna to go to the GovShop main page and I just want to point out to you that when you come to the main page, right up here where I am right now, it says for buyers. 
under buyer resources, you can click there and you can access um, different training and resources that we have on how to use GovShop and get the most out of it. But like I said, if you'd like us to walk you through some training uh, for you and your team, please do let us know. Uh, we, are, we are out of time. I do want to be respectful and mindful of everybody's time, but at the same time, I'd like to ask you, Nisa, if any questions did come up. We did not have any questions. Very good. In that case, uh, we are definitely out of time, um, and that's more for uh, being mindful of your time, everyone. So thank you again for attending. Uh, please do reach out for us if we can help you get up and running on GovShop. And thanks again for your time. Have a good one.